Today, we will be discussing the newly introduced BroadSim Advanced Spoofing feature. Advanced spoofing is a powerful tool that allows users to create a multitude of dynamic spoofing scenarios. First, we'll take a look at a high-level view of how this feature works, then we'll configure a spoofing scenario, and finally, we'll run the simulation and watch it in action. This feature works with the standard BroadSim hardware configuration and is available now via a simple license unlock. This figure gives a good depiction of how a spoofing scenario is modeled. The truth signal is the GNSS output generated by the truth instance. The spoofing signal is the GNSS output generated by the spoofing instance. We model it here as coming out of the same satellite as the truth signal, but you can also imagine it as an entirely different signal source that isn't required to have any of the same characteristics as the truth satellite. You can configure multiple spoofers, which we would model as an additional red spoofing signal. But to make things simple, we're going to limit our example to the single spoofer case. The spoofing transmitter position is the position that the spoof signal is being transmitted from. There's a built-in propagation delay and free space power loss calculation that is done between the spoofing transmitter and our true position. Now we can jump into BroadSim and create our scenario. First, we will open up a new configuration and add in our radios. Our current platform supports the DECTEC DTA2115B radios. However, this feature is compatible with the X300 radios from our previous BroadSim generation. Next, we'll select our Truth GNSS output signals on Radio 1. We'll select GPS L1CA and Galileo E1. Now, we'll set Radio 3 to be our interference output. Clicking on this checkbox and selecting our signals of interest will automatically set our center frequency for the interference output. Now we can jump over and take a look at our spoofing instance. To open up a spoofing instance, we'll first need to go to Configuration, Skydell Spoofer Instance Editor. This is where we enter how many spoofing instances our license supports. Once we've done that, we have our Skydell Instances option where we can open up our spoofing instance. We only have one output type, which is spoofer. We'll go ahead and add our spoofer. Each spoofer has a group number. This is the same group number that is assigned to our interference outputs in the truth instance. We'll do our signal selection like normal, and we'll choose GPS L1CA and Galileo E1 to match our truth instance. These are the GNSS outputs that represent the spoofing signal in the figure at the beginning. The spoofing signal can leverage the full toolkit of settings that you're familiar with in a normal configuration, such as custom start times, data logging, pseudo range ramps, and custom vehicle trajectories. Now we'll take a look at setting up our spoofer transmitter. To configure our spoofer transmitter, we're going to go back to the truth instance, and under settings, click on spoofers, and add spoofer. Within our spoofer, we have our general tab, which lets us change the name of our spoofer, enable and disable it. We're going to disable it for now, and I'll cover that later. Change our reference power, which for this example is going to be 2 dBm. And there's a few other advanced options, which we're not going to go over right now. Under signal, we have our address, which is the IP address that we're using to talk to our spoofer instance, our status, which we want to say connected, and our output section, which tells us everything we need to know about the GNSS signals being output on our spoofer. The screen dot means that we've configured our spoofer correctly. If it was yellow or red, that means there's an issue with the way that we have our spoofer configured, such as too low of a minimum sampling rate or an incorrect center frequency. Those error messages would be displayed in here. In our trajectory section, we have a few different options. Fixed, circular, hardware in the loop, and track. We're going to use fixed, and I'll go ahead and enter our values for this scenario now. The red dot is our spoofer transmitter, and as we can see, it's sitting just off the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. In our antenna section, we have our pattern, which for this example, we're going to use the default, which looks like this. You can import a CSV file to give yourself a custom antenna pattern, which lets you define a gain value for any elevation in azimuth. 
You can also apply an offset and change the attitude of your antenna. Now that we're done configuring our spoofer transmitter, we're going to change a couple more settings and then we'll be ready to simulate. The next thing that we'll configure is our knockout jammer. To do this, we'll go down to interference under settings and add a dynamic transmitter. We're going to keep it in group 1, which is the same group that's outputting our spoofing signals. We'll go ahead and change our reference power to plus 5 dBm. In our transmitter, we'll add our signal type, which will be AWGN, and this will be 3 MHz wide. For our trajectory, we'll keep it fixed, and I'll go ahead and enter in the coordinates now. Our red dot here is our transmitter, and we can see it's just off of the Golden Gate Bridge here. Next, we'll change our start time. We're going to want our start time to be in the future because it makes our receiver happy. So we'll just go ahead and change the year here to be 2020. It's currently April, so June works for us. And lastly, for our truth instance, we're going to choose our trajectory, which will be a vehicle simulation. We're going to import a KML file, which was previously made and saved onto the machine. We will choose our truth trajectory. As we can see here, it goes along the Golden Gate Bridge and then splits off to the east. We will choose a speed of 80 kilometers an hour, click finish, and that will do it for our truth instance. We're going to go ahead and finish configuring our spoofer instance now. There's only a couple of things we need to configure in our spoofer instance, one being our start time. We're going to make our start time identical to what it is in our truth instance. So we'll change that to be 2020. And then for our vehicle, we're going to change our trajectory to be a vehicle simulation. This is going to be a KML file, just like in our truth instance. We'll go ahead and select our file here. And choose our spoof trajectory. This trajectory follows the same route as the truth trajectory until we get to our split here where it goes south and our truth goes east. We will give it the same speed, 80 kilometers an hour. And that will wrap up our configuration. So at this point, we are ready to begin our simulation. Before starting our simulation, we're going to connect to our receiver in the truth instance. I have a Ublox F9P receiver connected to BroadSim via USB. We'll choose the port TTY ACM0 and use the baud rate 115-200. BroadSim will read in the NMEA stream from the Ublox receiver and plot the position on our map as well as give us some signal information in our constellations tab. At this point we're ready to start the simulation. We can see now that we're streaming our F, we have our elapse time and our date, and if we check our spoofing instance, we can see that we're also streaming our F. If we take a look at our spectrums tab, we have our Truth GNSS on Radio 1 RFA, we can see our Galileo E1 and GPS L1CA signals, and over here on our interference output, which is Radio 3 RFA, we see our knockout jammer being transmitter 1 here, our AWGN signal and spoofer1, which is no signal because we disabled it during the configuration. We disabled it because we want to be sure that our receiver is tracking our truth GNSS and that it's not tracking our spoofer for the entire scenario. Once our receiver gets closer to our transmitter, we'll turn on our spoofer. 
Taking a look at the right side of our map, we can see some information about our simulated signal, our truth GNSS, our receiver, our transmitter 1, and our spoofer 1, which is currently disabled. Something to pay attention to is the reference power at the receiver for transmitter 1. As we get closer and closer to our transmitter, this power level is going to keep rising. If we look at our constellations, we can click the show receiver button here and now we can see the different SVs that our receiver is tracking and what their signal power is. We can look at GPS as well as Galileo. We'll go ahead and let our receiver get a little bit closer to our transmitter. As we get closer, we can see that our signal quality is degrading quite rapidly. We'll go ahead and zoom in here. Once our SVs start to drop out, we'll enable our spoofer. Now that our receiver is barely tracking at all, we're going to come into our spoofer 1 and click our enabled button. If we flip over to spectrums, we can see that our spoofer signal is active now. Along with that, we can see our power at the reference as well, which is negative 110 dBm. If we look at our deviation, we can see how far off our receiver got from truth as we got closer to our transmitter. Now that we're far enough away, our receiver is tracking some SVs now. Our truth and spoof trajectory are currently the same, and they're going the same speed, so it's unclear whether the receiver is tracking our truth or our spoof GNSS. We won't know until we hit our split up here. We'll let the receiver get closer to our split. As we approach the split here, we'll see if the receiver continues on east, it's tracking our truth. If it turns south, it's tracking our spoof signal. It appears that our receiver is taking our route south, which means that we have successfully captured the receiver and it is following our spoofer signal. If we look at our deviation, we can see that it's growing quite rapidly as we get further and further away from our simulator position. Now we're just going to let the scenario play out. That concludes our advanced spoofing tutorial. Hopefully you found the process of creating a spoofing scenario fast and intuitive. This was just one example, but this feature gives users endless possibilities when it comes to spoofing testing. I'd also like to note that everything we showed today and everything that the feature offers can be completely automated by leveraging the SDX API. If you have any questions or would like to schedule a web demo, you can email us at support at arolia.com or you can visit us at our website, arolia.com. Thank you for watching.